What is up everybody, Sinestra here, and today we're taking a look at Mythic Ursoc. Now Ursoc's probably going to be the third boss that you tackle in Emerald Nightmare on Mythic difficulty, and as strategy wise, he's really easy. But oh my god is this boss a gear check, and it's going to be a very important that you've done a lot of heroic runs, you've done got as much gear as you can from the first two Mythic bosses, and hopefully you have a good few legendaries under your belt in your guild group. That's really, really important because this is all about how much healers, how much healing your healers can do and how much damage you can put out as a DPS. So, what's the strategy for Ursoc? If you've done it on Heroic, you've pretty much done it on Mythic. There's only one extra added mechanic. So, the first thing you can see is he's dropping Miasma, which are the pools that fear players. You can't stand in this, so you need to move the boss around the outside edge of the room to utilize the space as well as you can. Second thing he's going to do is he's going to do a charge. Now, once this his charge is on a random player, this random player needs to run at least 25 yards away from the raid group, and then that charge needs to be soaked by other players. Because if it's not soaked, it's just going to kill your raid. However, once you've soaked the charge, you're going to get a debuff called Momentum. Now, if you get hit by another charge before Momentum runs off, you're going to get one shot. So you need to split your raid into two groups. We chose group one and two to take the first charge, and then three and four to take the second charge. As you can see, I was in group four. I was taking that second charge. He also spawns an ad every third Miasma. Now, this bear is really important that you get him down at the right time. Now, he, after he's he's going to spawn the bear, then he's going to do his charge. He's going to come back and spawn another Miasma. And then the he, the ad bear is going to cast a, a roar, which is a fear. But by that point, that ad needs to be dead. So you need to manage the DPS and cleave onto the second ad while keeping your damage high on Ursoc. You cannot afford to let your damage stop on Ursoc just to focus the bear. So we chose that our melee very primarily focused on the second ad and our range dotted it. So Shadow Priests were dotting, Mages were putting dots and things like that, and then we were just switching it into the second ad for execute range so that it died at the right time. This is really important because Ursoc damage needs to be your primary focus. The other thing that the boss does is called Roaring Cacophony. Now, everybody needs to be within range, 25 yards of the boss, in order to soak Roaring Cacophony. He does this really a lot, a lot of the time between charges, so you need to make sure that you're stacking and moving as a raid group. The way we kind of chose to do this is that so we all sort of clump together, but if you were not soaking that charge, you move towards the head of the boss. And you could stand about 25 yards away from the head of the boss so that you could do as much damage as possible. Your group organization is also reasonably important in this phase because you need to make sure that you're splitting things like Shadow Priests, Hunters, Mages into the second Soak group just so that they have time to open on the boss properly and put out as much damage as possible. Your melee and other and sort of like healers can take over the brunt of the first charge which gives your big damage dealers a good chance to do a decent amount of DPS. Now Shadow Priest specifically here, you, Surrender to Madness is really really important. And you need to find where you can pop it with your group. Now, me and Dream, our Shadow Priest in XIS, we chose to pop our Surrender to Madness about 45% on the boss. Now, also, we had the advantage of because we have two Shadow Priests in the group who are going to be doing a lot of Surrender to Madness damage, that we were able to save Lust to the end. If you have two or more Shadow Priests in your raid group, I would super recommend Lusting later on in the boss encounter, because Surrender to Madness has the ability to really carry the last phase of this fight. As you can see here, we're just popping Surrender to Madness, we're just popping Bloodlust now, and we're going into the last section. Now, none of the mechanics stop in this last uh, like 30% where the boss enrages, you just need to be putting out more healing and more damage. So Lust is great for your healers at this point as well, because you're going to be soaking charges, dealing with adds, and doing as much much as possible. Now tips for Shadow Priest specifically on this fight, Surrender is really important. If you're struggling, make sure that you're using Void Torrent on cooldown to keep yourself in and save dispersions for when you're getting to around 100 stacks. This is going to be a really good oh crap button when you're starting to struggle. If you've got the class neck, save that till later on as well. You want to be using that to stay in as much as possible and be using person like try and make sure that you are as soon as you're over sort of like 70, 80 stacks, you're completely removing Mind Flay from your rotation. This boss is all about staying in Surrender as long as you can and just trying to carry the damage as much as you possibly can. Now you can see here, 
I did 430k DPS before I died. And Dream, who's our other Shadow Priest, who has the Legendary Belt, which makes it a little bit easier for him to stay in a little bit longer. I'm super jelly. I'm super jelly, Dream. But he managed to stay out alive to almost the end as well and did a 480, which is a really damn good rank for him. So, grats on Dream. But yeah, keep focused, guys, and Ursuk's going to go down for you. Thanks for watching. I'm, I've been Sinestra, and I'll catch you in the next one.